my name is uh, Arthur Slontons and today with me I have Wolfgang Alper, a longtime Zabbix contributor and a partner. Wolfgang, please introduce yourself. Thank you for, 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 for the nice introduction. So uh, my name is uh, Wolfgang Alper from, from, from Intelligent GmbH. Uh, we are a German premium partner for several years now and um, I'm working by myself with Zabbix I think for more than 20 years now. I, it's hard for me to say because it me was my age, yeah? so I have grey hair, yeah? <laughs> but uh, I mean that's the truth. Yeah? Yeah. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you're a long time Zabbix uh, contributor when it comes to extending Zabbix in yeah. different ways, right? Developing ex like third party yeah. solutions, things like that. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how did you start? How did you start with extending Zabbix and building things on top of it? When yeah. was it? What were your first steps? Yeah. How did you start with it? When uh, before I was working uh, with Zabbix and before I was running my own company, I was working for uh, a very big company at that time. It was uh, uh, a vendor of um, communication technology, of telco technology, and I was responsible for network monitoring environments for telcos yeah? and uh, for internet connections, uh, voice, voice of IP stuff. And it was really expensive. And Somehow they moved to another business, and uh, that was when I started with uh, with my own company with uh, system integration. And I thought at that time that um, that that monitoring would be something that not only the big companies would need, but also the small companies. I mean, if you're running a small company and your IT doesn't work, it has the same impact to you as it has on a big company. The scale is different, but it's is the same story. So you can't provide services. So essentially that was something important. And then I looked to the market and uh, I looked into different projects and different open source projects, also in payable projects. And then at that time I found, um, I found Zavix. And what really, what really um, made the decision for me to work with Zavix, and that answers the question for the integration thing, is the possibility, the option to be able to integrate something into Zavix, to make adjustments and modifications, to make this solution a solution that will work in my environment. And what's still missing, even in our commercial offering uh, that we saw, there were like um, in the millions, yeah? uh, at the time also HP OpenView was not <laughs> very easy to obtain or not very cheap. Um, these integrations had to be done from very professional people for very, uh, uh, with very uh, uh, expensive hirings, etc. And Zebix offered all of this out of the box. Yeah? And then it's when I started to do in, uh, integrations. I remember by myself, the first one that I did was, uh, was, um, was uh, to monitor a RAID system. Uh, we had a hardware server and uh, it was a hardware uh, RAID implemented at that time. And we needed to monitor the uh, RAID uh, level. And there was a GUI component, yeah? But they also had a command line tool, yeah? This is the stuff with this black windows, yeah? Where you're scary. keying something, the <laughs> scary stuff that Windows admins don't like. No offense to Windows admins here. And, and uh, yeah, and we were able to easily, within, within an hour or so, we could integrate this weight monitoring stuff into Zabbix. And uh, really, I was sold. I thought, that's amazing. Yeah? You know, we, we, when we present Zabbix, we say it's a universal yes. monitoring solution, right? So that's, I guess, the universal part behind it. Um, okay, so over the time, of course, you've built more and more integrations on top of it. So for someone that's starting with, you know, they're using Zabbix and I think, okay, I want to integrate it with different solutions. I maybe want to build a third party solution on top of Zabbix. What sort of knowledge should people try and, and obtain? Of course, there's Zabbix API, but maybe you can suggest some scripting or programming languages that worked out best for you. Yeah. What, what's the level of entry there? What would you say? I is think, required? And, I, and I think, and, and honestly, I really think that is, uh, that is one reason for the, for the success that Zabbix has. Yeah? I think when you would like to start, you should be command line safe. So in, within your operating system, whether it be Linux or Windows, it doesn't matter, or Solaris or Mac or where you feel comfortable with. Yeah? Uh, but I think uh, the easiest way to get your first steps into these sort of things is to actually use uh, extend the Zabbix agent with, with, with uh, user-defined parameters. I mean, it's so easy to do, yeah? it's, but it gives so much power. Like I mentioned this, uh, this rate controller example. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is where you should start with. Yeah? If, you are, 
if you if you're dealing with remote systems and do it more sophisticated maybe you want to use ssh stacks uh, ssh checks as well and if you are into that if you are into programming maybe um, some shell script programming or maybe some powershell stuff or even php or c then you can try yourself and use the zebix api and go further mm -hmm. so those are yeah some ways um all right so that's extending um, you mentioned that you worked quite a bit with telco companies, right? Yeah. And that's a whole other topic. But in your experience, so telco, what would be the major challenges for telco companies and integrate Xabix within telco companies? Yeah. What would be the major challenges in, in that environment? It's... It's uh, 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 one, one, important, one important aspect to understand if you, if you talk about this uh, telecommunication and carrier business is, is, the, is, is the scale. Yeah? Is the scale. So if you think that you have many hosts or many systems, I promise you talk to a carrier and you will see complete different numbers. Yeah? So one thing is to, uh, has to work with scale you have to work with security really an important point here yeah i could okay that's not the time but i could tell you stories for uh, how attacks have been uh, on snmp stacks for example where router went down where uh, not entire country but parts of for example also germany lost internet just because of this and where we had to supply fixes within four hours or so yeah so uh, I, there are stories there. So the challenges really are the scale, the security, uh, all, and, 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 and there comes something uh, on top of it uh, because they are, they are critical infrastructure. I mean, telephony, uh, uh, IP services are critical infrastructure right now. So we really rely on our daily lives on that. Um, so you also um, have to integrate different uh, vendor solutions. So there might be a vendor who is specialized in accounting, in, in security, in, in uh, uh, internet access, in whatever. And, um, and you have to make sure that you get the big picture across all of your environments. Mm -hmm. So in a typical telco environment, at least in the project where I'm actually involved in, yeah, I mean, we are talking about like 380 to 400 monitoring systems on site. And we're talking about systems running about 15,000 items on one host to give you some numbers. Yeah? So the scale is completely different. Yeah? And this needs to be managed, this needs to be organized, that needs to be secured. You need to make sure that the access uh, restrictions are there. Yeah? And, even, uh, and especially if it comes down to the point where you want to integrate all of this, for example, in a centralized um, incident management system, for example. Then there are a lot of things to uh, take care of, which you won't have in smaller environments. Mm -hmm. And I do recall you giving speeches, I think multiple speeches across the years about integrating Zabbix yes. with different telco yeah. systems. And that was really the uh, driving factor. Yeah, that was really the driving factor. And what I enjoy so much, I, I think I, uh, at one time I said something that uh, I think uh, Zabbix for me is like uh, those Lego uh, stuff where you can build houses and cars and whatever we'd like to. And I'm still um, standing on that, uh, what I've said there. Um, I, I think that is really what, what drives me uh, because you can do so much. And if you integrate a solution like Zabbix with something else, so you buy, uh, you, you create something which is called middleware, or we would call it middleware, something in between, a small piece of software that communicates with uh, the transfers A to B, yeah? then you get so much more. So it's no longer one plus one equals two, but you get one plus one equals two, three, four, five, whatever that value of the entire solution is. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, I think we are, as a company, are really good in doing this sort of integration because we, in most cases, understand what the customer is looking for. And uh, we have the um, abilities to create um, the required software pieces in different languages. and. Um, and we can provide a solution and we have the API knowledge and so on. Yeah? So um, that is what, what drives me and it, it really makes me happy if this stuff is used in real world environments. Yeah? I'm a little bit proud also because I was part of uh, doing the software design. And it is used, I mean, based yeah. on the presentations that you've presented, right, yeah. in large 
difficult environments with many different parts. Yeah. You've also talked about middleware, I think, also before yeah. how you've implemented it and so on. Um, so let's take a look. This this speech is happening before before summit, right? Mm. Uh, before your summit speech. Yes. Um, that is still to be presented. So maybe you can give us a little bit of a preview of what you're going to be talking today, what you're proud, what solutions you are proud of that you're currently working on or have recently worked on. And then let's look at the future. What more sort of yeah. integrations or external solutions we can expect from you in, in the future. So, yeah. For, for, uh, I don't want to give the presentation up front because we still need to wait for uh, uh, that it's given. But I can spoil a little bit on um, the idea was, um, so we have seen in the past a lot of presentations like we have uh, big environments, we have huge numbers and we have uh, uh, a, a lot of hosts, etc, etc. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And this time I thought, um, I really, because it, it's coming from heart, really, I can, I can say this, yeah, there's a commitment there. I thought it would be nice to have a talk about, um, about um, extensions and integrations done with Zabbix. Maybe giving something to the community they can use for their own use or maybe they can use it to build something up on that. So that was the idea, yeah. And, uh, and also I'm, uh, we are actually, we, we spend a lot of work in what is called data science and big data in the last year. And we made cool stuff there. And I'm going to teaser something about big data integrations. Yeah? Oh, right. That's and great. It's, yeah. And it's, it's, it's really amazing. It's, it's, it's an amazing topic. If you think about that, it's an amazing topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to spoil that one, but that will be, yeah, that will the be speeches something. Speeches will be available, I think, by the time these videos come out. So, but yeah, watch the speeches yeah, after watch, this yeah. and yeah. see for yourself. Yeah. Okay. So that's for the speeches. What is something that is currently maybe in the early design phases, something that you plan to present maybe in the coming years or something like that. Can you give us a tease? What's something that you are excited yeah. to work for the future yeah. maybe? <clears throat> I mean, uh, we, will, we will present on, uh, on the summit yeah, also uh, our, our first application, our, our Intelima mobile client for Zevix. I'm so excited. It's, um, we started um, with a design in 2013. I mean, that's really a long time ago, yeah, and it's a uh, fourth generation now and it has all the bells and whistles hopefully it's available on App Store and uh, and on iOS uh, on App Store and on Google Play Store so we announced this one and uh, we will do th we will do two things um, in the next year that are on the on the roadmap on our internal roadmap and where we also have cluster my client projects where we are going to integrate that one so so first of all is um, we are looking forward to provide an uh, API server on, on top of the Zebix API who allows applications like our mobile client to have more intelligence, to do more things. Yeah? Actually, we are limited by what the Zebix API provides. I don't want to walk into details here because then we are maybe spending two or three hours now. Yeah? And, um, uh, but, but that's basically the idea. So there will, there will be... Um, more information coming soon and the other one is um, is uh, is uh, our uh, our un un engagement in cloud environments yeah especially uh, in in uh, kubernetes environments to be more precise and um, we are working with some uh, uh, bigger clients in that area and help them to deploy zebix instances within their kubernetes clouds environments and we're talking about many Zebix server, not just one or two, but like 50, 70, 100, yeah, which are already deployed. And um, we are facing some challenges there in this cloud area. So it's very easy to deploy something in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fairly easy, let me put it this way. Yeah? So, but there are some, some, some burdens, some questions that came up later. So how do I maintain the configuration yeah how can i adjust the configuration of the existing deployments i have um, how do i manage secrets that is something really really important yeah and uh, these are questions and and how should the configuration and the uh, uh, maintenance of this cloud environments be uh, how should it be accessed so is it something like you have to use cube control and then you're running your yaml self-written files and they do something or do you want to have a web interface where a normal tech 
people can you know say I would like to have a Zebex instance yeah should it be auto integrated in your central incident management system where if so how and what are the is there are a lot of questions what I'm trying to say is that if you again think the carrier environment on a large scale then things become a little bit more complicated and that's what we're dealing with where we, we already have solutions uh, that we are going to offer and I hope that um, in the next year we can show more about this one oh right? yeah definitely yeah. i mean um, we've had we've had other uh, people here also talking for zabbix spotlight and cloud and kubernetes yeah. it's sort of the large paradigm shift right it's, it's it was just a matter of time until you guys yeah. get to play around with it and work with it yeah mm -hmm. um so thank you we covered a lot um one thing that i wanted for you to talk about uh before we leave shortly before we had this conversation you mentioned that you you had your first Zabbix specialist certificate when ages ago, right? Yes, I think I, I think um, I think my Zabbix certified specialist certificate, and I really make sure it's I think it's two thousand two two thousand three something like that, yeah. And I have it in paper. That's the point here. It's in paper. It's available in in paper. It's a printed version, yeah. So that gives everyone an idea of. Yeah how much of a long time fan yeah. you've been of Zabbix. 2002, 2003, that's way before my time at Zabbix, um, yeah. way before I've heard it all, so that's, that's amazing. So Wolfgang, everyone, thank you. Thank you a lot for contributing, being part of Zabbix community and having this conversation with us yeah. here. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a, was a pleasure to be here today with you here. All right, and I'll see you around in the summit. And yeah, other listen, listen, listen to the talk, yeah? Yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah, listen, I mean, listen, listen to the talk. Yeah. Um, it will be a great presentation. You'll see. All right. Thank you. Bye. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.